Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm putting together a few fall containers. I'm actually gonna do this in kind of a two-part series because today I just wanna show you the plants and how I'm putting them together and hopefully it inspires you to get out there and plant some fall stuff. And then the second part of the series, I wanna decorate this whole area behind me. So I never really have paid attention much to this area. This is our back sun porch. And it's kind of weird because I always tend to decorate our front formal entrance, but we don't use that one. Aaron and I, actually, we don't use this one either, but we walk by it every single day. So I thought, you know what? It would be really fun to have this look really warm and welcoming right here. So the first thing I did was I gathered some containers and I'm really excited because this is balanced. I have like a real balanced area to work with. I can do the same thing on either side. Um, up front, it's not like that. So I gathered actually eight containers. I'm gonna plant four of them up for you in this video and they are four that will be on one side and they are really pretty. They're kind of like this dark glazed, dark gold glazed. And I uh, got two different styles. So there's this kind of like scalloped edge one and then a really smooth edge. And then I just went to town with plants. Now I did not go with a specific style or color scheme. I just picked what I thought was pretty. So hopefully it all comes together really well. I don't, really don't think you can do much wrong with fall plants though. So I wanna start with this container here. This is the smallest of the four. And I wanna keep this one really, really simple and just put one grass in it. So I'm gonna get my soil put in actually all the containers real quick. All right, so a lot of people ask me whether or not I start with brand new fresh soil for every time I plant my pots. I actually don't. Like in my summer containers that I already have planted right now, I usually start with fresh soil only in the spring. So in those summer containers, I will just pop my summer plants out and then put fall plants in. They don't need as much nutrients, so I'm not as concerned about it. But in this case, these were all new pots, so I had to fill them completely full with new soil. So this is called an Eversheen Carex. And I just wanted to do at least one of the pots, just a single plant so that it was something to kind of give your eye a little bit of rest. This is a zone, I think it's a zone five. Yep, and grows 16 by 16. And I just really, really like the structure of the plant. And this one I can put in my greenhouse or you could put it like in a garage and winter it over if you live in a colder zone. We'll pop that out. It doesn't look like the roots need to be teased at all. Looks pretty fresh. Push it down in the soil. And then I just make sure to pack that soil in really tight around the root ball, but I leave a good, about an inch for watering, like an inch lip. So that one is all done. Now, if I wanted to, I could come in with some moss and kind of top dress the soil to make it look like really complete, but I don't think you'll even notice once I get all my stuff going on. Okay. All right, for the second container, I think that of all four of these, this is gonna be the one that's kind of the biggest focal in terms of height. Um, so I've got a really pretty perennial grass I'm gonna tuck in here. It's called a Prairie Winds Apache Rose Panicum. This is a perennial grass, and this one is perennial hardy to zone four. Um, so it's a really tough grass that here in my zone five climate will probably winter over even outside. Uh, root system looks pretty good. I'll give it a little tease on the bottom. So I'm gonna kind of tuck that one back into one side. And the next plant I'm gonna do will be the one right in front of the grass just because if I plant this side, I won't be able to see this side very well. This is just a beautiful bronze mum, absolutely gorgeous. And you guys, mums are really easy to take care of in fall pots. You just wanna make sure that you keep them deadheaded. Um, that way aesthetically they look really nice. Now this is a perennial mum, so I can pop this out at the end of the season or winter it over in this container and then plant it out in my landscape. Now I don't know if this is positioned exactly right. I can't tell from back here, but Aaron's behind the camera. He says it looks great. <laughs> so we'll go with it. Um, next plant is my trailer. This is a Dichondra Silver Falls. These are a wonderful, wonderful plant and I love to use them in fall containers because that touch of silvery blue just brings like some brightness. I just love it. I might have to trim that a little bit when I get it in place. We'll see. Next up is a pansy. This one is called Matrix Solar Flare. And I really like the Matrix series because they have nice big blooms. And this one has very fall looking colors. I think it looks really good with this mum. And you can already tell that I'm packing this pot extremely full, but you have to keep in mind, and I've said this a hundred times, that the nights are getting cooler and longer. Plants are not putting on as much growth this time of year. Um, so you can get away with putting a lot more in containers and they will stay happy. So I think I have room for a couple more plants. I've got an ornamental cabbage here, and this one is called Osaka Pink. I think this is beautiful, and it brings a bold texture. 
And that's the thing, you guys, just look for differing textures. I mean, look at all the textures we've already got already. All right, I'm gonna remove a little soil from the back here. I filled this container a little bit too full in the beginning. So for the last plant, and I'm sorry, you guys, I'm talking from behind the grass here. Um, I'm gonna be using a Bright Lights Swiss chard, which is a vegetable. Usually you find it in your vegetable gardens, but I love to add these into containers because look at the color of the stems. It's a mix of oranges, pinks, um, yellows. Sometimes you get some red in there and I love the texture of the leaves. I actually do not like Swiss chard. I've never had it in a way that I actually really enjoy to eat it. So this is a better use of it for me anyway. Now I'm feeling around in there with my hand to make sure I've got soil packed around each root ball and that I still have enough room to water. And then I think that this one's done. So for this third container, this one is about the same diameter as the one I put this Carex in, but I think I'm gonna use maybe two or three plants in here to make it look a little bit different. Um, starting with this lemon coral sedum as kind of my spiller. You can see how it's already kind of spilling over the sides of the pot. And I like that it kind of marries, like it's in the same kind of family, like a brighter green. So I'm gonna put this one right in the front. Then we need a little bit of color. This one is a viola. Uh, called Gem Scarlet, and it's got those really sweet, like small pansy looking flowers, and I like the color, that red color. That's the one time of year where I will go all out with red and be okay with it. <laughs> you know what, I changed my mind. I'm gonna take this viola out because I think I wanna use this one alongside this zinnia right here because I think the colors go a little bit better, and I'm gonna use this pansy instead. This is a Pansy Nature Mulberry Shades. And you can see that this one has a little bit larger flower and it's standing a little taller. I think this plant will get a little bit taller than the viola, which I think I need in this arrangement. Yeah, I like that already a little bit better. Next up is another ornamental cabbage. I love these cabbage because check this out. It comes three per container and they look kind of like, I mean, you could cut them and use them in a bouquet because they have long stems and they will get longer as they grow. Um, but I love cabbage with the white center just because they shine so much. I planted a bunch of big white cabbage last year in our landscape and I enjoyed those so much. I'm adding a little bit of soil back in around this root ball because I took out a little bit too much. I just wanna make sure that there's no air around any root ball when I'm done. All right, third one's done and I think that looks really cute. It's just kind of perfectly fills the pot. Um, now the lemon coral sedum is a zone seven, so you could pop that one out. Well, I'd have to pop it out and winter it over inside. Um, but these, the pansies and the cabbage hold up really well through a super hard frost. So I can enjoy this one probably for quite a while. All right, guys, so the last container, I've got these five plants left and I think I'll be able to use them all. Uh, so I'm gonna start with this sedum in the front. This is called Rock and Grow Pop Star. Uh, this is a wonderful, uh, really tough actually, like zone three through nine, yeah hardy to negative 40 degrees. Uh, so they are really great to plant out in your landscape, especially if you've got a really sunny, really dry, hot spot, that's where they perform. And you can see that this one's just starting to bloom, which is typical of sedums. They don't start blooming until late summer, early fall. So all of these little clusters are gonna open up and be just so gorgeous and so bright. But I honestly don't even think it needs blooms to look pretty because I love the round shape of its foliage. It's kind of like a silver dollar kind of, is there a eucalyptus called silver dollar? I don't know, I think it's really pretty. All right, so now I'm gonna use this viola. We'll tuck this right into the front. And then I'm gonna move on to this black mondo grass. This one's called Black Beard. They're a zone six, so they're not hardy enough for my zone. However, last winter we had a very mild winter. I have some in a container that's kind of off the screen on my right, and they all wintered over, which was so fun. But this kind of brings a really neat texture, and then it gives that kind of Halloween kind of appeal. You could use these really easily in Halloween arrangements. All right, so now a hippo red. Now these are a really wonderful foliage plant that you can grow in sun or shade in the house outside. Um, definitely not a perennial in a cold climate, but they winter over wonderfully inside. So I'm gonna tuck it in on this side and I'm gonna give this one a little bit of room because it will want to grow quite like bushy. And the very last plant is this marigold. This variety is called uh, French Durango Red, and they caught my eye the second that I saw them down at the garden center. I knew that I needed to work some of them into my fall containers. This one is incredibly pot bound. This is a great example of one where it's actually needed to kind of tease the roots a little bit. At least that's my opinion anyway. <laughs> Marigolds have a scent to them that I had to come to like learn to love and I do like it now. I can already smell it right here. 
All right, so let me get this stuff all cleaned up and I'll line all the pots up so we can see kind of how they look together. All right, guys, all four of my containers are done and I think they turned out so pretty, so quintessential fall to me. And I love the different mix of textures and colors. I like that I didn't stick with just one theme and I do love theme. I love, you know, when somebody does an all white something or, you know, all bronze, it looks very pretty. And I might do that in some other areas of my garden. But I think for this spot in particular, when I get them all arranged, it just needs color right here. There's not a whole lot going on. Um, so I think it's gonna look really pretty. And it just goes to show that sometimes when you go pick up a random assortment of plants, they can come together really nicely and very pretty. And you guys, I normally don't go for glazed pottery. I think you could probably see it a little better on this container right here. But these dark gold glazed are just so natural looking still. They bring a little bit of sheen, especially on this one. I don't know if you can see it as much. This one has a little bit more sheen, but I think mixing these two kind of textures together, we've got a real kind of slick sided pot and then this one's scalloped. I think that adds a little subtle texture that's really nice as well. I hope that you guys feel inspired by seeing all of these plants come together. It's just fun to see fresh plants, I think at any time of the year. I love watching stuff like that and seeing new, new things. So anyway, that's it for this video. Make sure that you stay tuned for part two of this video series when I put this whole area together because I think it's gonna be really pretty. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.